the new points to address in today's grammar lecture are speech frame les mots and what happens when you have a pronoun attached to a noun. Let's begin by circling back and talking about participles, today addressing the attributive function. Remember, a participle in English is an ing word, running, jumping, laughing, etc., and syntactically, a participle is a verbal adjective, and so has the same three functions as an adjective. You can have an attributive function where it describes a noun, I have not met half of my living relatives, predicate function where it makes a statement about a noun, her sister is living in Alaska, or substantive where it takes the place of a noun, why do you seek the dead among the living? So far, all we've used in class are predicate participles, where you're making statements using participles. And syntax of a predicate participle is that it'll always lack the article, and it can occur either before or after the noun. And the syntax of predicate participles is the same for predicate adjectives. Same is true with attributive participles. Just like adjective, an attributive must always occur after the noun it modifies, and the article must agree. So, you can have an indefinite noun, ich medaber, where both the noun and the participle lack the article. Or you can have a definite noun, ha ich ha medaber, where both must have the article. Now let's address a slightly more complex example. I'll read it, translate it, and then talk about the complexity. He ha isha ha ohevet basar translates into English, she is the woman who loves meat. The complexity here is I translated the article attached to the participle, not as the article the, but as a relative pronoun who, relative pronoun being who, whom, that, or which. And most of the examples in the Hebrew Bible of attributive participles have to be translated into English like this as relative clauses. So it sounds bad to say she is the loving meat woman. So just make it good English, and good English is, she is the woman who loves meat. Same is true with this example taken from the Bible. Vegam le lot ha holech et avram. And also to lot who walked with Abram. Et here meaning with. This is a word that you'll encounter next week. Now notice here, Lot is a person's name, so it lacks the article, but it's still definite because it refers to a person, so attributive participle has to be after, and it has to be definite having the article. Notice, finally, that the participles here are not translated into English as ing verbs. So this is where... Um, it is a participle in Hebrew, but doesn't get translated as a participle into English. And so it's no longer an ing word, and the translation can vary based on context. So ha'ohevet is who loves, simple present tense, or ha'holech is who walked, simple past tense. And so the tense of participles is very context dependent. Um, we'll address tense aspect mood as it pertains to participles um, in a few weeks from now, but today I want you to get the fact that it can fun they can function attributively to describe a noun. If so, the syntax of it is that the participle is always after the noun and the article agrees. Next, speech frame les mots. A curious mind may wonder, what is this form les mots? Well, it's made up of preposition, la, and an infinitive form of the verb, amar yomar, which means to say. Now, you may not know what an infinitive is yet at this point in the course. That's okay, because this form, le mor, does not function like any other infinitive in the Hebrew Bible. It has a very unique purpose, a very specific function, 
it introduces direct speech. So it occurs just before a quotation starts. Here's a verse taken from the Hebrew Bible. This is Joseph's brothers, after they've been to Egypt, return to their father Jacob and say what happened. I'll read it. Sha'al ha'ish lemor ha'yesh lachem ach. So here it is. The man asked, saying, usually lemor gets translated as saying, but you don't even need to translate it at all. Translation is not important so much as noting the function is important. After lemor, a quotation is about to start, is, is going to start. Here's the quotation. Is there to you a brother? Means do you, a group of men, have a brother? So there you go. Lemor, its function is it introduces a quotation, occurs just before a quotation starts. And finally, singular nouns with attached pronouns. Here's our chart. Just begin by looking at the attached pronouns. Here I have them called type 1. This is going to be opposed to type 2, which we'll see next week. Type 1 here, this is the kind of pronoun that you've seen so far. So you've seen these pronouns attached to preposition la, ain, and the direct object marker et. When you have an attached pronoun on a noun, the attached pronoun always marks the possessor of that noun. So susi means my horse. Suscha means your, a man horse. Talking to a woman, susech means your horse. Talking about a man, his horse. And talking about a woman, her horse. Now, this attached pronoun, I keep making the point that it has a mapik here in the hay. That's important for distinguishing between a couple things. Remember, if you see a mapik in the hay, that marks the attached pronoun meaning her. This is important because if you did not have the mapik in the hay, this would be a feminine singular noun, susa. That's a feminine horse, which evidently in English we call a mare. So if it does not have so it's pronounced susa either way. If it does not have the mapik, then it's a feminine singular noun, a mare. If it has the mapik, then we have the attached pronoun, her, and then masculine horse, her, stallion. Okay? All right. Here we have our model feminine noun, para, with attached pronouns. And when you add the attached pronoun to a noun that ends in kamets he, the he becomes a tav. So my cow is para ti. And this he becomes a tav when that word becomes longer. So if you have a feminine, if you have a noun that ends in kamets he and you make it longer, we've seen this where the he becomes a tav. You've seen this in a dual noun. So Regel raglaim, you have the aim ending. Well, if the fe if the singular form ended in commence hey like safa, then you get hey becomes a tav in the dual form safa time. We've also seen this last week with the smichut. If you have a singular form that ends in commence hey and that becomes a bound form like safa, a man's lip is safat ish. So. Hey becomes a tav when the word gets longer. This is just something that happens a lot in the language. All right. Talking to a man, parat cha, is your cow. Talking to a woman, parat tech, is your cow. Talking about a man, parat to, is his cow. And parat ta, her cow. And here are going to be our plural pronouns. So now we're going to have a plural pronoun attached to a singular noun. So susenu is our horse, talking to a group of men. Suschem is your horse. Suschen, talking to a group of women, your horse. Susam, about a group of men, their horse. Talking about a group of women, susan, their horse. And same thing with our feminine noun. The he becomes a tav because the word gets longer. Paratenu is our cow. 
parat chem, your, a group of men, cow, parat chen, your, a group of women, cow, paratam, their, a group of men, cow, paratan, their, a group of women, cow. Now, when you have a noun with an attached pronoun, there's three different patterns for what can happen to the initial vowel of that noun. Number six shows vowel reduction to a schwa, and this is like what we saw last week. A word gets longer, the accent shifts, and the initial vowel reduces. This is a natural language thing. Safa is your flashcard form, my lip, svati. Basar, your flashcard form, my meat, besari. Shem, my name, shmi. Ozen, my ear, Ozni. Now with this last one, we didn't get vowel reduction to a schwa, but we got vowel shortening. Uh, cholam is your long O vowel. Kmetz Khatuf is your short O vowel. And, you know, I've never told you yet of where you can expect to find a Kmetz Khatuf. Turns out a Kmetz Khatuf was only written that way in a closed, unaccented syllable. Closed meaning it ends with a consonant. Here it's open and the syllable ends with a vowel. So Ozen here it ends in a consonant, o's, because it ends in a consonant and it's not accented because ni is accented. This is a kmetz chatuf. And you could expect a kmetz chatuf because you have memorized ozen, and there's really no reason why an o type vowel here would change to an a type vowel. Number seven shows you that the this is a more drastic change where the vowel will change to a different vowel type. So e type vowel, a type vowel. Melech. Malki is my king. Evid, my servant, is Avdi. Sefer, my book, is Sifri. Pri, my fruit, Pirji. Number eight shows you that the initial vowel can actually stay the same. Kise, chair. Kisi, my chair. Rosh, my head. Roshi. Ish, my man, e she, off, my nose, a p. So here we have three different patterns of what can happen to the initial vowel of the noun. It can reduce, it can change to a different type or not change at all. And uh, the moral of the story is whether or not there's little change, big change, or no change with the vowels, the moral of the story is as long as you have your um, flashcards memorized very well, and you know these words very, very well, when you see them inflected in context, you should be able to figure them out, um, even though they may sound a little bit different.